Welcome, movie fans, to another episode of Hollow Victories, where we don't fight for truth or justice just to be better than some other shitty movie. Yeah. I'm your host, Matt Presents, joined as always by my super co-host. Hello, I am Super Mackle. You know, I that's the name I came up with the second you pitched this con this idea for <laughs> Hollow Victories, and I was just like, it's okay, by the by the time we record the episode, I will have thought of something better. Didn't happen this time. Super Mackle. Anyways. It works. Yeah. It's 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 good enough. So, in sort of a parallel to our first episode, which was Batman and Robin vs. Catwoman, today we have elected to do Superman 4, The Quest for Peace vs. Supergirl. Yes. Um, a similar situation, fourth movie in a, a series, plus a female-centric spinoff, although in this case... The female-centric spinoff came first and was canon to yeah. the other movies. Yeah, where, where the um, Catwoman movie, it was like legitimately, you could argue that it wasn't even like, you. it wasn't even like connected to Batman, really. It's implied at the yeah, end no. it was going to go off to be connected to Batman. Like Gotham is implied at the end of it. Not not there, not featured, it's implied. I, it started life as a Michelle Pfeiffer spinoff. Like her character from uh, Batman Returns, but and then that just didn't happen. So, but uh, I guess I guess Supergirl is what happens when you get the female centric spinoff made before you're finished with the franchise. Yeah. Well, happy anniversary, Matt. Yes. Uh, <laughs> thanks. One 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 year yeah. of hollow victories. Yeah. Uh, would you like to start us off by introducing Supergirl? Of course. So Supergirl is a movie that was released in 1984. Uh, again, part of the series. I believe you told me. I, I wish I would have looked this up before recording this, but it came at it was in between two and three. Correct. Uh, I believe it was in between three and four, three and four. OK, so it was released between three and four. It's directed by Jenna. Oh, this is a weird one. Um, Janot Swart. Uh, okay, he's he's French, so I'm gonna say it's Jeno Schwark. Jeno Schwark. Uh, and it's about Supergirl. It's a spinoff movie focusing on Supergirl, though within the universe, Superman is still a character. In fact, I I don't know a lot about Supergirl, but I, to my understanding, she's not just like uh like a, a gender swap of superman the two characters both coexist in most of the most of if not all of the adaptations of supergirl uh yes she's superman's cousin okay and uh, that that was the case in this movie i wasn't sure if that was the case in all the movies uh and- i'm sure there are like certain comics where she is not superman's cousin but generally she is Superman's cousin, or or Kyle's cousin from Krypton. We've got a weird plot this time where it almost feels like they forgot to write her character because the film is about her basically unintentionally, but basically fucking her entire planet up to the point where they're all going to die. That's never resolved by the end, by the way. And then she just is. leaves. Is it? She she gets the magic ball back. That's the important part. Okay. Okay. I guess technically they never show her the, going back and yeah. n- I, oh, like okay. fixing it, but she, she gets the thing she came for. At the end, she is kind of going back home, though, right? I, I guess at the end, she yes. does leave her. So, yeah, okay. We, we never get to see the planet get saved, but yes, it's, it is implied that she's going back to save them. Granted, a lot of time has passed, so... You could argue the planet's not still around, but with the happy end in the optimistic end in in the context of that world, you can infer that they're all okay. Yeah, but basically, I mean, she she does take her sweet ass time. She takes her. That's the thing. She leaves her. She leaves her planet. I can't tell if she did it on purpose or not. She leaves it's, her planet. <laughs> well, okay, it's not really a planet. It's it's in inner space. Mm. And she takes a spaceship to outer space because she lost, like, the magic ball that powers the magic inner space city. Oh, my God. That was just being held together with saran wrap. Yeah, yes, it is being held together with saran wrap. Uh, But anyway, 
she leaves her planet after basically fucking them over. Um, not, you know, there, there's, you know, someone else at fault there too, but she is the one who loses it pretty quickly by creating a mosquito for some reason. Don't understand why she did that. Don't understand what was appealing about creating a mosquito to her, but she did it. She could have made a butterfly, you know, she could have made anything but a mosquito. Um, a fucking bee would have been more charming than a mosquito. But, Charmy B. Yeah, Charmy B. Uh, but she leaves the planet, she goes AWOL, and then she goes to Earth where she chooses to attend classes at a private school and falls in love with a guy who's in love with her but is brainwashed to being in love with her. And it's well, not. He drank a love potion. He drank a love potion, but that's another thing that I don't think is properly addressed by the end of the movie. Because he's still in love with her by the end of the movie, but she never even really... Does she even find out that it was because of a love potion? I don't think she does. <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. I, I guess she doesn't really find out. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't think he ever, like... I thought it was only supposed to last 24 hours, although maybe that's just something Chris said when we were watching it. Well, it, no, no. Uh, uh, in the movie, they say, oh, this spell only lasts 24 hours. But then after the 24 hours is up, he still loves her. They could have implied that better. I don't know. Like, there should have been... There's there's a scene missing with those two is basically what I'm saying. Um, but yeah, she goes to Earth. She goes to school. She eventually finds the two villains and fights them. And then she goes back to her planet. But she does take her sweet time. She doesn't even acknowledge the trouble that her <laughs> planet was in until, like, the last 20 minutes of the movie. <laughs> Yeah, and, and that's kind of the problem with her having a love interest, right? Is because at the end of the movie, you know she has to go back to to this uh, Kryptonian city that they managed to save. Uh, so, so like, that's that's kind of why it, it feels unresolved with her love interest in the movie. Yeah. Because, like, nothing happens, nothing comes of it. I, uh... You know, in... With most Hall of Victories movies, I thought this was a bad movie, but it was entertaining, which I appreciated because, let's see, the last three that we did were was a Rob Schneider pair up, uh, yes. one that included Showgirls, and <laughs> then two like fantasy novels that I didn't care about. Um, so yeah, it was like, I this was refreshing in compared to those other movies where I was mainly just bored watching those movies. Where with this one, I was like. It was pretty funny. I, I got a I got a good chuckle of it. I think the two villains are actually great, and in a better movie, they would have like fit in perfectly. I think the biggest problem with this movie is like one, the script is just confused with what it wants to be, because again, it sets up a problem that it doesn't even acknowledge until the end of the movie. <laughs> um, and the main character, like the villains, are great, but the main characters, like they fucking suck in this movie. Um. Kara is just like, I don't know. She just seems oblivious the entire movie. Like she is not a well-written, yeah, well, I mean, strong female protagonist. She's just like, like you pointed out, it, it sort of seems unclear if she came to earth on purpose or not. Yeah. Cause she, she's supposed to be getting like the magic ball that powers their city back. But it seems like she just kind of stumbles into that. Like, yeah. she, she just was like, hey, let's go for a ride in the outer space spaceship. Oh, no, now I have to save this ball to save the city. The, yeah, and then her, like, you know, her friend is there, and they don't have, like, great chemistry together, and she has a love interest that oh. the <laughs> ending of the movie treats like it was a big deal, but the rest of the movie didn't treat it that way. Fucking uh, Lois Lane's sister. What are the odds? Yeah. And, uh, yeah, Clark Kent is not in the movie, although a picture of his shown uh, in the movie. Yeah, he. Uh, there is a poster of him in the movie. A very, like, big poster that then <laughs> uh, Supergirl is just like, whoa, wait. Like, 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 after five minutes in this room, she's like, whoa, a huge Superman poster. Like, I thought it was gonna be, like, a tiny picture or something she was looking at, but no, it's this huge poster. You'd have noticed that first thing when you walked in the room. Yeah. Um, Christopher Reeves was supposed to be in this movie, and he apparently backed out, like, right before filming started. Um, 
Which might have been a good move for him, although he was later in another film we'll talk about. Yes. <laughs> yeah, but, he uh, almost had potential to be a Hall of Victories king, although I guess the one guy will be, because there's one actor who appears in both movies. Yes. Um, um, do we want to talk about the cast? We should. I do eventually want to get to, because I, I, I actually have a pretty broad thing to say about this, and it will kind of lead us into the cast. Uh, Absolutely. Just good things about the movie, because I actually do think there's some. One, this is and this is like something that can even be seen as a negative, but it was fun to watch and make fun of. Uh, <laughs> and that, you know, that again, that doesn't that might seem like a negative. But after some of the shit we've watched for the show recently, <laughs> that was appreciated. <laughs> and also, um I think that the two villain, like I mentioned the two villains already, but I think if you would have put them in like, you know, a, some like old Disney Channel original movie where they're just the two bad guys in that, they would have fit in just fucking perfectly for that. Like they were, they were solid. Like the one was an over actor, but she was a funny over actor. And the other one, Bianca, she's the only fucking character's name I remember other than Kara. Bianca's just like there. She's just, th she's just her roommate. And, but she just fucking... <laughs> She's just kind of she's just kind of rolling with everything, and that makes her very funny and likable to me. We were comparing them to like the villains in the My Little Pony movie, yeah, and they do kind of feel like those girls because yeah. they're like like witches who who get up to goofy hijinks. In terms of like characters from these movies that we've watched on the show so far, Bianca's absolutely in the top ten, if not top five. Bianca was great. The main villain was great, too, uh, but I, just something about Bianca's, like, indifference to literally everything, but still getting punished just as badly as the main villain was hilarious to me. Uh, Brindo Vaccaro. Yeah. She's in some stuff. She's in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, though oh, I couldn't yeah? tell you who she was in that. Um, Faye Dunaway plays the, uh, lead character, chewing scenery... As Faye Dunaway is ought to do. She's in some good stuff, but my god. My god, she chews scenery when she... Like, like absent of good direction, she will just chew scenery. She is an insane person. Um, but she's very funny in this movie. <laughs> what does that phrase uh, mean, chew scenery? Uh, just like overacting. Oh, okay. Hey, okay, so you're talking about the main villain, right? Yes, yeah, she, yes, Faye Dunaway. Absolutely, she's absolutely, like, going over the top in this one. It's just kind of welcomed for what the movie is, though, you know? You're, you're looking for something yeah. entertaining in a movie like this, and well, you kind of latch on to whatever you can get. Something I wanted to say about this film is, like, I it, it is unrealistic. It is a really goofy, unrealistic film, but I think... I think it's almost unfair to criticize it for being unrealistic, because it's a sequel to Superman. Mm -hmm. And the original Superman is not a realistic film. It's No, it isn't. It's It's got this, like, magical realism to it, like Supergirl does. Now, I think it works in Superman, where it doesn't quite work in this movie. I think um, the biggest problem with this movie is just the main... Like, the, our heroes aren't likable in it. Because well, they're really dumb... And they're neglecting a very serious problem. And I don't think that's intentional, but that's what they did. That's fair. Um, the thing I want to compare this to, honestly, is... Uh, uh, one, of, one of the few, few films I know you and I disagree on quite greatly. Uh, Blues Brothers. Mm -hmm. I just watched the sequel, Blues Brothers 2000. Because I'm uh, going through all the SNL movies, video coming soon. This isn't the first time we've had this talk. I don't think we disagree greatly on it. I like Blues Brothers. <laughs> I'm just not a big fan of it. Well, my my point was, like, Blues Brothers is sort of a wild, over-the-top movie, but it commits to the universe very hard. Mm. Where I just watched Blues Brothers 2000, and it's a movie that feels... Both a lot more grounded, but also, like, it's doing way weirder shit mm -hmm. than the first Blues Brothers movie. Yeah. And I think, I think Supergirl's got a little bit of that problem, too, where it's, like, it's, it's not, 
as weird as Superman, but also it has stuff in it that's so weird that Superman would never do that. Like, S Superman strikes the balance. This movie does not. I think it's like a consistency thing. I think that there's like points where it feels right and then points where it feels off and... Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, it, it does even work in a few scenes in this movie. Yeah, I I'd just agree. feel like... Like, Superman made it work most of the movie. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'd agree. Where this, this, it works so much less. Yeah, I mean, Superman's like a, for me at least, because I just watched it today, that's like a 7 out of 10 where Supergirl's like a generous 3 out of 10, maybe 2 out of 10. I'm, I'm glad you liked Superman, because I, I thought like, you know, that's one I could see Michael not liking. Um, the first, the first, like, 20 minutes are completely wasted on setup for the sequel. <laughs> um, and then the ending is, like, really weird, where he just, he flies around the Earth so much that he turns back time. Yeah, I wasn't too crazy for that part, because I feel like they could have just not killed Lois Lane and, yeah. uh, and avoided that altogether, but most of the movie is very charming and likable. Like, it, I think the characters are strong. I think that it's like pretty well made, especially for the time. You know, it does have that bad green screen in it, but I think it was like for the time they were being cautious oh. about it. They were trying to make it look as real as possible. And I think that the love and care is clearly there where with Supergirl and us, you will talk about Superman four, but especially I think Superman four is worse. They just fucking half assed it so much. It looks, it looks so fucking bad in these two movies. And yeah. they came out after that Superman movie. Yeah, no, Superman was a little ahead of its time on the green screen effects. Yeah, yeah, I, they did a better job of lighting the characters up to help them blend with the screen. Like, the background they gave them, they did a lot of close-up shots. They can kind of, like, you know, they did have to do some of the long shots because you want to see that with Superman. But they also focused a lot on close-up shots, so it was easier to hide the green screen. Like, they were being smart about it. Mm-hmm. Um... Going back to the cast, you've yes. got Helen Slater in the lead. She's not very good, honestly. <laughs> she no. she did not have much of a career outside this, I, I, uh, probably for good reason. Although, you've got uh, Peter O'Toole in there. <laughs> the famous Peter O'Toole, uh, you know, well known for, like, Lawrence of Arabia. Mm -hmm. He's, uh, he, he plays Zoltar, which is the most generic sci-fi name I think I could think of. Mm -hmm. Like, I swear I've seen a Zoltar in something else. Um, Zoltar. Yeah. It's it's kind of his fault that the ball gets lost in the first place. Yeah. You see him at the beginning, and then you see him again later when Supergirl gets trapped in the Phantom Zone. Yeah. And I thought he was... I, I thought he did a fine job for what he was given. You know, like... He yeah. was he was trying. It's a it's a bad script, but he was like trying to do something with it. I feel the same way about yeah. Nigel. I don't know. Maybe it's just their accent. I, I appreciate the accent. <laughs> no, but oh like, yeah, uh, uh, Peter Cook, yeah, famous British comedian Peter Cook. Uh, it felt like they weren't like completely half assed, and it felt like they were trying to give something good with it. He and uh, Dudley Moore made a bunch of movies together. Mm -hmm. So, it, honestly, it was weird that he was in this movie. <laughs> uh, he he and uh, Peter O'Toole, kind of odd choices. Maybe with O'Toole, they were going for something like uh, they had with Marlon Brando in Superman. Peter Cook, odd addition to the movie. With uh, You mentioned Kara's actor, bef actress before. She uh, She's kind of a weird scenario for me because it's like, she does this... This is going to be a specific thing I'm commenting on, but I feel like you'll know what I'm talking about. Where she does this wide eye thing in most of the scenes she's in. And it's like, <laughs> oh, I yeah. think it's supposed to help portray her as like this innocent character. Like it's supposed to like add like, oh, the world's so mystical to her, you know. Um, but I think it just makes her look creepy. I think it just makes her look stupid. <laughs> she She I seems very confused by the world around her yeah I, uh -oh. even when she's on her own planet though it's not like when she makes it to earth that starts she's i think it's like she is absolutely doing it on her own planet or her own 
whatever you call it. Yeah. And it's like, maybe that would make more sense if she did it only when she was on Earth, when she was flying around. The way she got her suit was fucking weird. Oh, yeah, yeah. She's just like, she she gets in the ship and then all of a sudden they just put the costume on her. Like, it's abrupt for Superman, too, but you get a heads up that it's going to be abrupt. Because, like, he has that voiceover saying, when you wake up, you're going to be in the suit. And 12 years is going to have passed. Which is weird, but it's intriguing. Where if Supergirl, they just fucking, within a second, she has it on. She she has, she is not, like, a full-on Mary Sue, but she, she certainly stumbles her way through this movie. She, she is not very proactive in this story she just sort of ends up somewhere and it's like well guess i'm fighting this fight now the very little that i've seen of the supergirl cw show i know it, it it's kind of an infamous series but i saw a little bit because it's someone i knew was watching i think it was one of my sisters and they did at least have scenes of her like i know it's a tv show versus a movie but they did at least have like scenes of her like training of her getting familiar with kryptonite and whatnot Mm-hmm. And that might be necessary for her. She's just kind of on Earth and ready to go. <laughs> yeah, there is there is one more actor I think we need to mention. Yep, uh, Mr. Mark McClure, who plays Jimmy Olsen in the original Superman. He also plays Jimmy Olsen in this. He is the only actor they got back from the original <laughs> Superman. <laughs> Uh, and, and we do have to add him to our list of double ups cause he yep. was in Superman four as well. Yep. Yeah. He's, uh, he's making his way around. If we ever do Superman three, is he in that one too? I think he is in Superman three. So we'll um, see. Maybe Superman three one day. I don't know. Yeah. Honestly, Superman, Superman, three. Superman, Superman three and Batman forever probably could be paired up. Because they're not as bad as the fourth, but they're still, like, the not very popular third movie that came out of the series. Yeah, I think I know which one of those would win, but it could be a good pair-up. I I, we'll I, a, I wouldn't know right, right off the we'll, bat, though, because I haven't seen either. We'll put a pin in that one. That, that could be good. Superman 3 is an odd film. It's a, it's a movie where you just go, like, why? Why did you make these decisions? <laughs> um... One thing I found pretty funny was that the villain in this movie, uh, Faye Dunaway's character, is named Selina. And we picked this movie as sort of a parallel to the Catwoman movie. And <laughs> Catwoman is named Selina, Selina Kyle. Except she isn't in the Catwoman movie. <laughs> so this movie has a Selina, and the movie that's supposed to have a Selina does not. <laughs> Yeah, I guess it's more of a comment on Catwoman in this movie, but yeah, fair fair enough. Yeah. I, I just thought it was funny. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. Um, although, I we, we watched this with our friend Chris, and I, I asked Chris, like, so how is this in comparison to the comics? Like, how accurate is this? And she's like, not, not at all. Not at all. <laughs> oh yeah, not even fucking close, apparently. Like the, the 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 first like five minutes of the movie, it's already wrong. It's like Dragon Ball Evolution. Like the second that movie starts, it's wrong because Goku's an adult hanging out with his grandpa. I don't think it's quite Dragon Ball Evolution levels, but it is it is wrong. It, it's not, but like because Dragon Ball Evolution doesn't even resemble Dragon Ball. But it's like it's just like that fact of something that dismisses the original piece immediately. You know, it's just that like. Right off the bat, it's not following the source material, right? It's not like, yeah. it's not, because sometimes when someone does an adaptation, it starts off seeming right, and then it gets bad. It's it's always funny when it's just like, five seconds in, you're not getting what you, you're not getting what you paid for. Yeah. <laughs> I definitely have some comments about the special effects. Is there something we should talk about first? No, let's talk about the special effects. I think they're pretty bad. But, you know, kind of expectedly I, so, but... I think this is about average for the time. Possibly. That is a good thing to consider, is the time. There is one scene where I can't say that's true, though. Uh, yeah. There is one but, scene where... Do you know which scene I'm talking about? Uh, go ahead and explain it. There's a scene near the end where this creature picks up Kara and starts stretching her. And it looks, not only does it look really bad, 
but then it cuts to shots where she isn't being stretched out. It's almost as if the people making this movie realized how shitty that looked, but they weren't about to redo the shots that they fucked up already. (laughs) Cause there's shots where she's like being stretched out and it looks like, it looks like a, I don't even know if high school is fair. I don't, uh, high school level isn't fair. Cause I remember when I was in high school, I tried doing something like that and I was like, wow, this doesn't work. So I'm going to say it's a middle school level after effects project is what that fucking looked like. Yeah. And then it cuts to a shot where she doesn't look that it, it still looks bad, but doesn't look that bad anymore. So it's like they kind of got the memo, but didn't decide to go back in and fix the one shot they did. Cause they're like, ah, who fucking cares? Who fucking cares? Let's release it. Yeah. We're done. (laughs) Um, Because that was bad. The flying effects, I can kind of... Yeah, it didn't look as good as Superman, the original one, but it's it's what you expected from green screen back then. Labyrinth is an amazing movie production-wise that has horrible green screen, for example. It's just they didn't have it down yet. Yeah, that was like a year after this. Yeah. And that... That probably has worse green screen than this. Granted, this uses green screen a lot, and that used green screen for exactly one scene. Yeah, and the only, and I, to give Lavram some credit, they used green screen in an ambitious way. It failed, but it wasn't being done out of laziness. Granted, for flying in movies, how else were we going to do uh, it other than strings? But for Labyrinth, they were like trying to do something really cool with that scene. It just didn't work. They wanted these creatures to be able to like move in like a dance sequence and take parts of their body off and attach it to it. Like they want, they were got, it was an ambitious scene. It just didn't work. I, I think that scene is in labyrinth is charming as hell uh, because yeah. of like, because of the effort. It's just, it was a failed effort, but I mean, I think that can humble some people that even a movie as good as like production wise, that's as good as labyrinth had a fuck up like that. Yeah. And I mean, I feel like, Supergirl didn't overuse it. It kind of knew, like, okay, our effects budget is not what it was with Superman. Yeah. So we're going to tone it down a little. Uh, I, 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 I agree. It's just... Yeah, it was, it, was, it, it was a pretty big drop from Superman, I think. Like, I don't yeah. even think they got the wind physics down well with her <laughs> flying around. Like, often, like, nothing was moving on her. Yeah. This movie is kind of odd in the broader Superman canon because it is it is supposed to be a part of the original like a Christopher Reeves Superman series. Yeah. But it's kind of gotten buried. Warner Brothers doesn't really bring it up that much. Yeah. I've got I've got like a steel book box set here of all the super like all the old superman and batman movies so superman 1 through 4 and batman through batman and robin does not include supergirl but you know what it does include the sort of but not quite a sequel superman returns hmm that was sort of supposed to be like the fifth movie in the superman series but it isn't quite the fifth movie in the superman series because it's all different actors, and it's set in the modern day, and it's like, yeah, these characters would be like it's, 50, 60. It's like calling Home Alone 3 a sequel to Home Alone 2, is what uh, I'm getting. Not even, it'd be like, I don't know, it'd be, call, it'd be like calling The Dark Knight a sequel to uh, the, the, the Tim Burton Batman movie. Mm, okay, um, yeah, it's weird. <laughs> An interesting pair-up we could do would be Superman Returns versus Man of Steel. Because they're two very boring Superman movies, (laughs) but they're, like, boring in different ways, kind Mm -hmm. of. Uh, Although... Maybe that could be the second year anniversary. (laughs) Yeah, Man of Steel was, like... I don't know that it was really poorly received. It was sort of... Mixed. Half and half. Yeah... About half the audience hated it, and half of them loved it. I was bored, but I don't even think I watched the whole thing. I think I it was I, on I, at my cousin's place, and I was like kind of only half paying attention to it. I didn't enjoy it, but I I was watching it with some friends, and we were kind of like riffing the whole movie, so that made it fun. Yeah, it always makes it fun to riff things. I there's a scene where he flies over Africa, and I'm just like, hmm, Africa. Nope, no one to save here. Later. <laughs> Uh, Do you have anything else to say about Supergirl? Uh, 
you know, I guess some of the sets were kind of interesting. Like the two villains live inside of a haunted ride for some reason. I felt like they probably could have elaborated <laughs> on that more. Like maybe they're like selling tickets to it during the daytime, but they also live there. But it's just I, kind I of, think it was just abandoned. I think it was just like an abandoned carnival that they lived at. I, all right. I mean, it, it's a cool setting for them um, and they're goofy villains. So the goofy setting works for them and. I like the two, I, I guess that's it. I've already said it a bunch of times. I like the two villains. I I think that they're in the wrong movie though. Uh yeah, yeah. Because that's the thing, right? The first two Superman movies were like pure science fiction, and yes, they bordered on they bordered on science fantasy, but like this. This is putting magic into a series that already has, like, science fiction powers. And it's like, okay, so what's the difference between, like, Supergirl's powers and this magic witch lady? You, you know what else? Uh, the uh, tractor scene where the guy is, like, blind on the road walking around. That scene was actually pretty fun. Um, it was stupid, but it was fun. And it's kind of yeah, that campiness that I can accept in a superhero movie, you know? She, she like, gives him this love potion to make him fall in love with her. And then she just lets him, like, wander around outside. And he walks past a bunch of people and doesn't fall in love with any of them. It's not until Supergirl saves him that he's like, I'm in love with Supergirl now. And the only thing they had to do to fix that was like a line where he was like, I can't even see what's what's going on. Like, that's all they needed was just like a line to imply that he can't see because he is kind of walking around like he doesn't know where he is, you know. Um, yeah. But they it's just he's looking directly at people in that scene. <laughs> uh, that scene's funny, though. I like that scene. And um, he's a horrible, horrible love interest for the movie. He fucking oh, yeah, no. I mean, uh, he spends half the movie only interested in her because he's on a fucking love potion. Yeah, and then at the end, she, I guess he's interested in her despite the love potion, but they don't really have, like, dialogue that reflects that. You just imply it because it's been more than 24 hours. Yeah. And I can't give, like, and you could say, oh, but it's subtle. It's like, you can't give a movie like this props for being subtle. That's actually something they should have <laughs> explained. Yeah. All right. Uh, Supergirl? It's uh it's entertaining but it's not very good. Yeah. Um that it's it? probably worse than Catwoman and uh yeah, Batman and Batman and Rob. Definitely worse than Batman and Robin. Catwoman, it's like in the same ballpark for me, but I I don't really know which one I think is worse or better. Is it worse than Batman and Robin? It's certainly less enjoyable than Batman I, and Robin. I, I think Batman and Robin is better shot and has like yeah, you know, it's all better, right. better sets and all that. Uh, Batman and Robin's pretty high up on our Hall of Victories list for me. Oh yeah, I think I have it at like two or three. Yeah, it's a, it's a good one. Book of Henry is my favorite, but <laughs> I think Book of Henry is my favorite so far too. Yeah, but hey, it's Supergirl's definitely in the top ten. Yeah, yeah, no, entertaining film. Moving on to our second contender tonight, the sort of final film in the... Well, okay, it's it's the final Christopher Reeve Superman movie. You can argue whether or not Superman Returns belongs in the same franchise, but it's the last one with Christopher Reeves as Superman. It's Superman for The Quest for Peace. Uh, in this film, Superman is contacted by, like... Well, okay... The Daily Planet is contacted by a little kid who thinks Superman should destroy all the nuclear missiles. And because the Daily Planet has just been bought out by this bigger conglomerate, uh, the conglomerate is really pushing them to, like, make something out of this story of the kid who wants Superman to destroy the nuclear missiles. And, of course, Clark contemplates this for a while and... Finally, he he shows up and meets the kid, and he's like, I'm gonna do it. He, he gives, like, a speech in front of the UN. He's like, I'm gonna destroy all of the nuclear missiles. So he goes around the world and collects all the nuclear missiles and puts them in a big net and starts throwing them into the sun. But that dastardly Lex Luthor, he's up to something. <laughs> he, he breaks into a museum and steals a strand of uh, Superman's hair, and he creates, like, a biological 
I, I, I don't know, a lump of Superman's DNA and sticks it inside one of the nuclear missiles so that when it blows up in the the sun, it creates uh, Plasma Man? Is that it creates, his name? It creates Radioactive Man from the Simpsons. Radio- <laughs> I think well, it's Nuclear Man. I think Nuclear, nuclear Man. Nuclear Man. All right, I'll buy Nuclear Man. And so then Superman has to fight Nuclear Man, and my God, he takes his sweet ass time fighting Nuclear Man. It's like it's like thirty minutes of the film is just him and this guy fighting. Like the last thirty minutes is just these two characters duking it out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Oh my god, I I mentioned to you when we were watching this, it's like, we were on, like, basically approaching the last third of the movie, and they were busy doing the two dates for prom storyline. Yeah, uh... Where Superman had to switch back and forth between Clark Kent and Superman because he had a scheduled interview with Lois Lane, but he also had a date with the girl, um, you know, who's, like, the daughter of the person who owns this big news company that they get bought out by, um... He also has a date with her, and they're both in the same place at the same time. So he has to keep, like, finding excuses to go out. Yeah. And it's just like, that's such a weird story to have that late in your final movie. They also bring back one of the weirdest things from Superman 2. Now, I I love Superman 2. I think it's the best movie of this series. Uh, I think it's the best Superman movie. I don't think any Superman movie's been better than Superman 2. But in the movie, Superman has this power where he, like, kisses Lois Lane and erases her memory of him being Superman. And they just bring that back in this movie. And it's it's so out of nowhere and inconsequential. He just, he, like, takes Lois for a flight around the city. And then he's just like, yeah, okay, memory wipe. And it's like, do you do this often? Do you... Yeah. Like, how often do, do you just fly Lois around and then erase her memory? He he just does this to a bunch of women. He just goes up and says, hey, I'm Superman. <laughs> and then it works as a pickup move. And then he's just, he's just, he's just a bad person, honestly. Uh, we need Superman and the boys. We need to expose him for the monster he is. Yeah, so that's, that's the plot of yeah. Superman <laughs> 4. It, uh, like... I, Parts of it have potential to be an interesting movie, but it's so fucking weird. It's just everything together. It's such a weird experience. And the pacing, pacing is this movie's number one enemy. Well, yeah. I I mean, it kind of, it does everything in like these huge chunks, right? Like you get a huge chunk of the movie dedicated to like his relationship with Lois Lane and then yeah. a huge chunk of the movie dedicated to fighting Nuclear Man. And it's like, if you had sort of broken these things up, done them, like, one at a time, it takes him it takes him a while to even get to, like, the nuclear missiles. Which yeah. is weird to say, because this is an hour and a half long. It is 30 minutes shorter than all the other Superman movies. Yeah, it's an hour. It's almost an hour shorter than the first one. Yeah, and... and <laughs> That reeks of desperation to me. That reeks of like, yeah, we know this one's not going to be as good. It's it's just going to be ninety minutes. Fuck it. Yeah. Um. They also it we this wasn't a Warner Brothers production. They they financed it probably because they own Superman. But this one was specifically made by Canon Pictures, which was like an infamous uh, like action movie studio in the eighties, uh, known for their cheap movies and quick turnaround times which is probably why this movie was handed off to them because it's like yeah make a superman movie for us as cheaply and quickly as possible and it looked bad yes and Uh, i'll I'll say this i don't think it ever hits the low of the stretching scene in supergirl but i think it looks more consistently bad yeah no it is consistently bad the entire movie yeah there's there's a really funny moment where a uh, nuclear man picks up the statue of liberty and it it kind of looks good for a while you're like oh okay he's picked up the statue of liberty there's even a shot where they have like sta- an actual statue of liberty falling off a building but then there's a shot of it falling and it looks like a Terry Gilliam animation because it's clearly <laughs> just like a cutout of the 
of the Statue of Liberty, like a two-dimensional cutout of the Statue of Liberty. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what the fuck? Yeah. The effects are worse than Supergirl in this movie, and this came out three years after Supergirl. Yeah, and it's like an it's not a spinoff; it's an official sequel to this like beloved series. So it's like it's pretty inexcusable. Yeah, like Superman one was ahead of its time. Supergirl was kind of of its time. This is behind the times, right? Yeah, you could do better than this in, in 1987. Supergirl is like one of those Marvel movies where people aren't that crazy for the effects. Like, it's not like it's not like people are going to be making fun of it, but it's kind of like Age of Ultron where like it came out and people were like, it didn't look as good as a movie they released a couple years ago. Why, why, is, why is there a downgrade? But, but it's also like not like the Incredible Bulk, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Uh, I wouldn't say Superman I'm, 4 is amazing it's a, bulk levels, but it is... I'm it trying is to think of an bad. example. It's it's not that bad, but it's like, I'm trying to think of an example, and bulk just came to mind. Yeah, <laughs> I, I mean, and and it, it relies on the special effects so much more than Supergirl does. Like, Supergirl, I was kind of saying, like, okay, they knew this didn't look very good, so they didn't do a whole lot of it. In this movie, they're like, no, we gotta have Superman flying. And it just looked bad every single time. Maybe, I haven't seen Morbius, but based on what people say about it, maybe this is like Morbius. <laughs> uh, Morbius versus Gotti. The Kino episode of Hollow <laughs> Victories. Morbius versus Minions 2. <laughs> people like I mean, Minions 2. I've actually heard good things about it. Yeah. Something I neglected to mention in my description of this movie is Lex Luthor's nephew, Linny. Oh my god. Played by John Cryer of Two and a Half Men fame. Uh, also in Pretty in Pink, also in Hot Shots with Charlie Sheen. Um, before Two and a Half Men. Yeah. And he, he feels like Scott Evil from Austin Powers. <laughs> <laughs> I think that this movie could have been what landed his role in Two and a Half Men, where he's just <laughs> like this really dorky character that nobody likes because it's like you try it, it's like a it's like a really pathetic person trying to act cool is what it is. Yeah, no, he is very much trying to be cool in this movie. His character is this kind of like rebellious teenager you know yeah he drives a fancy car and dyes his hair and then his character in two and a half men you're just supposed to feel bad for him all the time in that show <laughs> oh imagine if his character in two and a half men went through a phase of dressing like lenny you like, know it would maybe, make sense. maybe they did <laughs> it would make perfect sense oh my god i i Shitting on Two and a Half Men was, like, a pretty common thing. I feel like Big Bang Theory came in and it took its place. Um, I shat on Two and a Half Men, even even though I didn't, I wasn't super familiar with it, if I'm being honest. I, I watched a decent amount of it, and it's like, God, I th it's just like the show had to, like, go on without Charlie Sheen. And I think that's when, like... The problem was if it really shined. I mean, I, I understand why Charlie Sheen got fired from that show, but oh, like, yeah. but like, God, I just, I, I feel, I feel a little bad, but he is just not a fun person to follow on a show or in anything. I am not impressed. Is he good in those other movies you mentioned? Uh, I like Hot Shots. Mm -hmm. Hot Shots is an entertaining movie. It's like a parody of Top Gun. Is he good in it? Is, like, he's specifically good in it? Um, he's not in a whole lot of it. He's he's uh, a more minor character. But he is, he's like a comic relief character. He is very much playing, like, the dorky character. Mm -hmm. All right. Although, uh, he's in the Robert Rodriguez movie Shorts, and he's pretty bad in that, but that's just kind <laughs> of a pretty bad movie in general. Yeah. Not not a fan of this guy. Maybe he'll make it back into more Hollow Victor's movies. Nothing against the actor. You see, uh, I'm sure he's a nice guy, but I, every time I've seen him in something, it's just uh, he's like one of those actors I've never liked anything he's done. 
Yeah. Um. Eh. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> as far as other actors, they did get like the whole cast back from the original Superman: Christopher yeah. Reeves, Margot Kidder, Gene Hackman, Jackie Cooper, Mark McClure. They're all in there. Yeah, I mean that's good. Um, they didn't really bring anyone super noteworthy in besides John Cryer. <laughs> like, like none of the new characters were particularly noteworthy. There is like, this is a little off topic. I, are you okay with changing the topic? Sure. There is a scene in this movie, and this kind of applies to everything. Like the writing, the performance, the effects. There's a super jarring scene in this movie. And when we were watching, I like said it's like flying Ryan levels of ridiculous where it just like <laughs> hits you so fucking hard. And that's the scene where Kent uh, Clark uh, briefly reveals himself as Superman to Lois only to remove her memory again. As you mentioned before, they bring that back in this movie and she jumps off a building and she's like, no, Clark, this isn't the way. And then he makes her come down with her. So it's like it starts as a suicide joke and then they start flying around and the effects look so fucking bad in this scene. But it's like playing like this inspirational, beautiful music that they played in like the first movie when the two first go yeah. flying together. It's and it's like, like this it, scene already exists, but better. And this is like, and yeah, Superman movies are no stranger to just reusing footage. So it's like. Honestly, they would have been better off to just recycle footage from the first movie. It's just... Like it'd be it'd be lazy, I'd call them out for it, but it'd be better looking than this. Oh my god, it looks so fucking bad. Like it didn't look acceptable for something that played in a theater, you know? Yeah. It I will say uh, the scene where he first starts fighting uh nuclear man. There's a lot of practical effects and it's like, Ooh. "Oh, this is where they spent their entire budget. Yeah, yeah. I remember you saying that when we were watching it. Yeah, that that was actually like a scene. Well, there were a bunch, bunch of explosions, bunch of fires, bunch of cars getting destroyed. That was a scene that had better production quality than anything seen in Supergirl. But it's just when, but when it stunk, which was most of the movie, it really fucking stunk. But yeah, it, it does feel like there was like a scene where they kind of were able to pull off some cool stuff. Yeah, mainly because it was practical shit, and they didn't like they didn't have to give it to their effects team, who either like didn't <laughs> care because they didn't care, or they weren't paid good enough. Uh, probably a little of both. Yeah, I think eventually, if you're like working on a project and it just becomes this apparent on what you're making, maybe just depression I kicks in, and you're just not willing to do more. <laughs> I'm sure the VFX team was given like. $300 for the entire department and just told, get it out before before uh, Labor Day. Labor Day weekend. It's very believable. Oh my god, just the fucking titles at the beginning of this movie sucked. And they, they suck in Supergirl, too. Like, it wasn't a good effect in Supergirl. Like, Superman, the first I, one, had a fine text effect, but it looked fucking awful in this movie, Superman 4. I think it looks fine in Supergirl, just like now we're used to After Effects yeah, opening Fair credits, enough. and that's what it looks like. Yeah. Fair I enough. Think that, I think that was more impressive in the 80s when you didn't have After Effects. That is fair. Looks pretty bad in Superman 4. <laughs> what What else do you say? In, uh, well, okay. Here's something you could say about Superman 4. It, it, it pulls this thing of like, oh no, is Superman dead? And a lot of superhero movies pull that shit. But then, like, they do it, like, two or three times. Two or three times it <laughs> looks like Superman is being defeated by Nuclear Man, only for him to come around and save the day. Because cause first there's a scene where he, like, loses his cape, and then the Daily Planet's about to run a story titled Superman Dead. And then... He comes back and he takes Nuclear Man to the moon and Nuclear Man, like, nails him into the ground. And so you're like, okay, he's stuck in the ground now. But then he comes back from that, too. The, like, it's it, several times. It's like, oh no, Nuclear Man's gonna win. He's defeated Superman. 
and he never has. It, it never works. It's like uh, it's like the movie is just a kid playing with his action figures. <laughs> the director of this, Sidney J. Fury. I hope it's Fury and not Furry. <laughs> um, interesting director. He directed the Ipcris Files, which is a really good movie, but hmm. nothing else he has directed is looks any good at all. I have seen one of his other movies. It's a Rodney Dangerfield comedy called My Five Wives. Hmm. Uh, uh, my friend saw a VHS of that at the store, and he's like, if I buy you My Five Wives on VHS, will you watch it? And I'm like, yeah, sure. <laughs> I, I've only seen one Rodney Dangerfield comedy, and it was Back to School, I think is what it was called. Hmm. Have you that never one? seen Caddyshack? Oh, I've seen Caddyshack. Never mind. Okay. Okay. Because I was about to have to show you Caddyshack. Caddyshack's the big one. Yeah, no, I saw Caddyshack when I was young. My dad showed that to me when I, I was like... I love that movie. I like it. I I, I, it, I liked it more when I was younger than when I watched it a year or two ago. We didn't really talk about what Jeanne Schwark directed, if we're pronouncing that right. See, he has more notable credits than uh, the director of Superman 4. He directed Jaws 2. Oh. Uh, and also, also Codename Diamond Head, a film which appeared on Mystery Science Theater 3000. <laughs> All right. So that's his track record. Yeah. Uh, probably noteworthy that Superman, Superman 2, and Superman 3 were directed by Richard Donner and Richard Lester. Those two. It, it was Donner for the first Superman, and it was Donner for most of Superman 2. He got replaced near the end of production, and then his replacement did Superman 3. Why did he get replaced? Disagreement with the studio. Uh. Uh, if you're going to watch Superman 2, I uh, watch the Richard Donner cut. The Richard Donner cut is better. Is that on not, HBO Max or no? I think so. Not, not like way way better it's not like uh fucking uh blade runner where, where like the theatrical cut is like kind of bad and then the or how about like brazil with the happy ending oh yeah <laughs> yeah it's not that um but it, it i i prefer the richard donner cut oh man what were we watching recently oh it was gremlins 2 i was about to say like where they mentioned casablanca with a happy ending that was gremlins 2 i'm that was not all the victories yeah well anything else to say about superman 4 the quest for peace not really i think that there's funny things about it It was definitely a fun movie to riff with the riff on with you guys definitely like more fun than a lot of the movies we've watched you know recently but it's not mm. one that left much of an impression on me uh yeah, I, th I think the pacing's a big problem with it. Like Supergirl, it's not a great movie or anything, but I was like, I felt the flow was all fine. It just, it's just the character, main character is fucking dumb. That's my biggest problem with that one. Is she's like a character who should be acknowledging certain things that have happened and isn't. Where this movie, it's like the pacing's just wrong. I don't. It's not moving. It's not moving from scene to scene well at all. Yeah, no, Superman four, not a good movie. Although, I could maybe see someone trying to argue that Superman 3 was worse. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I'd agree, but I could certainly see the argument. Do you, What would the argument be, if you don't mind me uh, asking? Well, just that, like, Superman 4 is more like Superman 1 and 2 than Superman 3 is. Mm -hmm. they They committed a little harder to this, like over-the-top superhero aesthetic than the third one did. The third one takes itself too seriously? Uh, a little. A little. It takes itself more seriously than this one does, I'll say that much. Is there um, any... Do you think there's any people who just, like, love it for that, though? Or is it mainly hated? Uh, I think it's mainly disregarded. Mm -hmm. It's like... Okay, Superman 3 was bad, but, like, we've got so much other bad Superman media that this isn't even noteworthy as a piece of bad Superman media. Like, Superman 4, for what it's worth, this is a noteworthy piece of bad Superman <laughs> media. Like, Superman 3, 
pretty forgettable in the grand scheme of things, except for like that Richard Pryor's in it, and and that makes you go, why the fuck was Richard Pryor in this movie? Nostalgia critic and Lean Carver reviewed it. <laughs> yeah, well, that checks out. That was the infamous. Where I think Superman Four was the infamous review where Doug Walker still had eyeliner on from Nelman, brother of the Joker. Uh, Nelman, brother of the Joker. Fuck. <laughs> Melvin, brother of the Joker. Joker. That's not even funny to anyone else. No one else knows yeah. what Nelman is. I didn't do that on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the only one that gets that. Well, no. I. I Mits, Mitzi and Chris will appreciate it. Maybe, but. if we're lucky, one day that joke will have a lot of significance. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> uh, Alright, let's move on to voting. Right? Yeah. Um, I gotta be honest with you, Michael. I'm voting Superman 4. Uh, no, 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 I'm not voting Superman 4. I'm voting Supergirl. <laughs> uh, uh, I, think, I think Supergirl commits a little better i think supergirl is trying and failing where superman 4 is not trying at all yeah it's trying to get a movie out before you know memorial day weekend where supergirl i think wanted to be a legitimate installment and it just wasn't yeah um yeah i agree supergirl has better consist like it has a better flow it has uh it doesn't have the advantage of being connected to a series of movie. I mean, it does have that advantage, but it doesn't have an advantage of having characters from a movie that people already like. Yeah. Uh, and it still comes out better. It has a uh, good, you know, again, better flowing. And I like the two villains uh, and the effects. Do it does hit some pretty bad lows with the effects. Uh, definitely has the worst looking effect out of the two movies. But in terms of just general consistency, I'd say it looks better than Superman 4. Yeah, and I could, honestly, I could see someone saying that they, like, unironically enjoyed Supergirl. If someone told me they unironically enjoyed Supergirl, I'd be like, you know what, I kind of get it. Anyone mm -hmm. who enjoys Superman 4 is enjoying it ironically. They're enjoying you know, yeah. it because it's bad. In terms of, like, a, you know, female empowerment movie, it's not the worst. They I mean, I don't even think it's trying to be a female empowerment movie is the thing. <laughs> Yeah, she she does like, you know, she does save people. They don't like, they're not trying yeah. to. They're not trying to like build it up, build it up as like, oh, look at this. It's the, it's the, yeah, the I, roles are reversed. It's the woman saving people now. They just kind of play it straightforward, which I think people would appreciate. Yeah, I think I think Catwoman was way worse with like the oh girl power. Ha -ha! Yeah. yeah. Um. You know, they have a scene in Supergirl where two guys, like, creepy guys approach her, and there's a lot of, like, directors who would have taken that scene yeah. too far. For Supergirl, though, it's just, like, she kicks their ass, like, immediately. So, yeah, that's the I, right I, way to do that scene. Yeah, that's probably as, like, girl power as the movie gets. Yeah. Um, the audience is against us on this one, but not by much. It's 56% Quest for Peace versus I hear 44% that. for Supergirl. Honestly, I think part of it is that Quest for Peace is a more popular movie. I think a lot of people haven't seen Supergirl. Also, people already have a connection to those characters, so it kind of like, you know, they've seen them in other movies, so I, I think the actors do, f like, the actors who are already in other movies do fine for what it's worth. I don't, I don't think, like, Superman or Clark's performance is much different in this movie than it is in the first one. Yeah. Um, so I think there's like a little bit of like connection there where if you love, if you love Superman one and two, you might yeah. like four more than Supergirl. Honestly, I think if you really liked, if if you were like really in love with one and two, Supergirl is more like one and two than four is. Mm -hmm. I guess but, I just mean in terms of like liking a yeah. character, you're happy to see them again. Yeah, well, although it's, if it's done poorly enough that I guess maybe you'd hate it even more. Yeah, and once again, very close. One of our closest matchups. So, it's not like e even overwhelmingly for Quest for Peace. It's it's just a little bit more for Quest for Peace than Supergirl. But, yeah, it's our podcast. We outrank you guys. <laughs> Supergirl wins. Yeah. Alright. So, next time on Hollow Victories...
Uh, we're going back to the 80s when video games were in a bit of a different state. Um, so, you know, a couple game studios decided, hey, let's make a movie to promote our game. <laughs> Two different movies used to promote games. And in a lot of ways, they are incredibly similar. And in a lot of ways, they are nothing alike. They are completely different movies. It's Joe Don Baker in Joysticks versus Fred Savage in The Wizard. <laughs> and joining us will be our resident retro video game expert, Chris Smashpack. Yep, nostalgia goggles. Nostalgic goggles. That's the name of the show. Yeah. Uh, I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to having Chris on, finally. <laughs> Definitely been a I... long time coming guest. Yeah. I think I know which one of these two is going to win, but I still think it's a very funny matchup. Yeah, I have no idea. I, I, I You told me, as, as always, the pair up was a surprise for me, but you told me that we were having a guest. You told me Chris was, was going to be a guest, and I was like, Oh, what's it gonna be? I was I was like thinking possibly Mario versus Street Fighter, but I'm happy with this one because I haven't seen either of these two, but I'm well aware of them. <laughs> All right. Um Well, speaking of video games, Michael, you've got a new channel. And oh, yeah. I wanted to know if you wanted to plug that at the end of this. Uh sure, thank you, Matt. Yeah, I have a new channel called <laughs> Spiny Norman. Where Spiny Norman. Yes, where it's my goal to play through the entire Sonic the Hedgehog series. Uh, Matt and other friends like Matt and Mitzi, uh, two you know two people you've heard on this podcast before. Obviously, Matt on this channel a lot. They've been on it frequently. Chris is on it with me, and me and me and Chris are like the Sonic masters. You know, where we're, we're, we're yeah. we'll shoot like Matt. Matt and Mitzi will hop on and talk about whatever they feel like talking about. Then me and Chris will get into ridiculous conversations I, you, you guys were getting like deep into sonic before we watched superman 4 <laughs> well we had to stop ourselves because i was aware that we needed to like watch a movie and record a podcast but uh yeah no that's uh that's been going on there's it's a let's play channel but it's also like video essays and whatnot it's been fun yeah it's been I'm, a fun change I'm, of uh change of base i'm in some of the sonic 4 episodes and very soon I'll be in some Sonic 3D Blast episodes. Uh, Sonic R is next, which I believe you, you and Peyton are actually in. Um, yeah, but that's that's going to be like a shorter one. Yeah, probably like five to six episodes. So it's Sonic R, then Sonic Adventure 2, and then uh, 3D Blast. 3D Blast, I think we had some good conversations on. I think those are going to be some of the best episodes. I'm looking forward to that so, one, yeah. So if you don't want to miss those, be sure to check out Spiny Norman. Hell yeah. Yeah, um, I, I like how that one came out. It's a good one. Anything else to add? Uh, no, uh, as always, it's been fun. Uh, hell, uh, yeah. It's been fun doing the show for a year. I know we're a little <laughs> over a year because we got the schedule messed up. but <laughs> Yeah, that's on me. But uh, uh, still, it's been a blast. It's been a blast doing the show. And uh, no, looking I, forward to I doing another year of it. Hell yeah. All right. Uh, until next time, for my co host, Michael Shadakel, I'm Matt Presents. Uh, see you in the next one. Peace. <laughs>